What's going on everybody out in YouTube land and welcome back to a new episode of GBA. In this video we're going to have a little conversation about video games and more specifically for this video we're going to have a conversation about games and systems. So what I want to talk about today is the debacles going on when it comes to the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X pre-orders. Um, you know I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen the videos out there and read the articles there's a lot of controversy going on, whether it be artificial scarcity of these systems or, you know, some of the retailers taking all the pre-orders and their employees uh, scalping them and different things like that. You can go on eBay and find the, a lot of these systems uh, selling for eight, nine hundred dollars even a thousand dollars which is absurd. I'm sure a lot of you guys know these systems will be readily available for years and years to come, so you should not pay more than retail for these systems. Um, but yeah, uh, and then the uh, companies out there that are getting pre-orders and not, um, you know, their employees aren't buying them up, there's just not a whole lot of them in general, and we never know when they're going to come out. PlayStation 5 put their pre-orders out before, you know, they said they were. Uh, Xbox has a lot of debacle going around for their pre-orders. So in this video, I want to talk about that, plus the reasons why I'm not going to pick these systems up. I'm not going to try to pre-order these systems, and I'm probably going to wait six months or so into their lifespan before I pick them up. And I kind of want to outline those reasons for you guys and have a conversation with you about it. But yeah, uh, so basically the first thing I want to talk about is these systems are impressive. Uh, when you're going by the power of these systems and what they're going to be able to do, it is very impressive. Uh, the Xbox Series X is a little bit more powerful than the PS5, but you're probably not really going to be able to tell that too much, to be honest with you. A lot of the stuff these systems are doing, uh, you've been able to do in PC gaming for quite a while, but this is new stuff to consoles, whether it be the, uh, you know, the solid state drives or 4K gaming at 60 frames per second, and you know stuff like that so these systems are impressive and I do look forward to picking them up and I look forward to play some of these uh, future games on them but uh, the number one reason why I don't plan on pre-ordering these systems or picking them up within the first couple months of their existence is because I'm not gonna fight for these pre-orders with people uh, you know the artificial scarcity out there makes it really hard to get these you've got a lot of people looking to pre-order these systems and not very many pre-orders and I just have better, uh, you know, things to spend my time on than worrying about being able to get these pre-orders. Uh, and I'm not going to pay scalper prices for these systems. So yeah, I figured I would let other people try to get these systems and I will wait. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time worrying about if I can pre-order these uh, gaming consoles. Number two, um, probably one of the main reasons why I'm not going to get these systems at launch is because the game lineups for them, I'm not really that impressed uh, with. Uh, now, I'll be the first to admit, I want to play the new Miles Morales Spider-Man expansion, but you're going to be able to play that on PS4. So, I'll probably play it there, and later on I'll pick it up for the uh, PlayStation 5 when it goes on sale or something like that. Um, Ratchet & Clank looks like a really fun game, but it's not something I have to play right away. Um, little the new little big planet. I love 3d platformers, but once again, it's not something that is like calling my name to go out and buy a system for uh, The new grand uh, Turismo game looks like a lot of fun and I love racing games But once again, not a system seller for me uh, or, uh, I guess like early 2021 they're coming out with the uh, horizon zero dawn sequel which looks like a lot of fun, but you're going to be able to play that on PlayStation 4 as well, or so I've heard. And when you're going over to the uh, Xbox Series X, you know, everybody was looking forward to Halo, but they've delayed that game. Uh, we've got a teaser trailer for Fable, but that looks like it's a long ways away. Uh, the new Forza games are going to be great, and I can't wait to play them, but not system sellers to me personally. Uh, so the one big thing about Microsoft that came out recently is that they bought Bethesda. And it's going to be interesting to see how many of their big games are going to be Xbox exclusives. Um, I do think a lot of those games will find their way to PlayStation and Nintendo. Because Microsoft spent a lot of money on Bethesda, so they're going to be looking for returns. Um, and, you know, they're going to want to sell as many copies of those games as possible. 
Um, but I do think a lot of those games could be timed exclusives for Xbox, which could be a reason to pick that system up. Um, but yeah, so overall the game lineups, they're not that impressive and it's not like telling me, oh, I got to go out and get these systems right away. And the third reason why I don't really plan on picking these systems up right away is because I already have a lot of games I haven't played. Um, PS4, I've got over 100 games. I've probably only played about half of them. Uh, the Xbox One, probably about half that. I've probably got about 50 games for that system. But once again, there's plenty of those I haven't tried out yet. Um, when it comes to the Nintendo Switch, probably 100 games behind me I haven't really dug into yet. So I've got plenty of games to play to keep me busy. Um, for those first few months of this uh, of the system's launches or whatnot. So I don't really need them right away. And to be honest with you, I'm more of a retro gamer anyway. I spend more time playing the NES probably than I do PlayStation 4. Um, so yeah, those are the three main reasons why I don't really plan on pre-ordering these systems or picking them up at launch. Uh, so I do want to shift gears a little bit in this video. And I want to talk about uh, what I am looking forward to in the next month or so, and that is the Oculus Quest 2. So I picked up an Oculus Quest last year, and I absolutely love the system. Um, I know uh, VR gaming is still kind of in its infancy, infancy, and there's a lot of people who haven't adapted to it yet, but if you guys haven't tried VR gaming, I strongly suggest checking out the uh, Oculus Quest 2, or at least looking into the system. It's a really good way to get into VR gaming, and you're not tethered to a system. It's wire-free. Everything is in the headset, whether it be the processor or, you know, just everything in general. So it's really, really fun to experience that six degrees of freedom without being tethered to anything. So yeah, um, when it comes to Oculus Quest 2, uh, very interestingly, they've increased the power of the system a ton, so it's going to be able to have more impressive games on it. Plus, they've uh, put better screens in it, which, which have higher resolutions, which will all but eliminate screen door effect, which is also a great thing when it comes to VR gaming. Um, but with those advancements, with the better screens and the better processors, they've decreased the price. Uh, the um, 64 gigabyte Oculus Quest was selling for $399. You're going to be able to get the lowest model of the Oculus Quest 2 for $299. To me, that is an absolute no-brainer to pick up. And along with the Oculus Quest 2, they're releasing the uh, Walking Dead Saints and Sinners game, which has been out for PC VR for quite a while. But I've been looking forward to this coming out on the Quest. So I will be playing that game on the Quest 2 as well. Um, so those are the two main things that I am looking forward to, is the Oculus Quest 2 and the uh, Saints and Sinners Walking Dead uh, video game. So I will be picking those up right away. Um, but when it comes to the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, I think I'm going to wait. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my views on that and, you know, kind of like just the debacle going around about these pre-orders in general. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about all this. Have you been able to pre-order these systems? If you haven't, are you still looking to pre-order them? I would love to hear y'all's opinions. And if you're not going to pre-order, are you going to try to go out within the first week and find these systems on a store shelf and buy them, which I highly doubt is going to be able to happen? But are you looking to do that? Maybe camp out for them if people still do that. I have no clue. Or are you going to wait six months or so like me and uh, just keep on playing what you already have? Um, but yeah, I would love to hear y'all's opinions on all that. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about everything that's going on with the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox uh, Series X. Um, but yeah, so until next time, guys, I think I'm going to end the video here. But I want to say thank you so very much for watching this episode of GBA. If you haven't, please like, comment, and subscribe. It would help me out tremendously. If you guys know anybody who might like this kind of content, please share the video around. I'm always looking to grow the channel a little bit. But for now, I think I'm going to go play some video games, maybe open up some subscription boxes, try to enjoy the rest of my evening. I hope you do too. So until next time, everyone, I'll see you later.